and afternoon and good evening to you all wherever you may be it's so good to be back it's good to be back to work and be able to come here in between my job but uh i miss talking to you it's just it's just not the same but you know november that's we're in ships and we heard that a couple of companies are starting to call back but we just pray it gets moving and uh we all, every single person here at the ministry can't wait to see you. So just stay strong and keep the faith and we're going we're gonna to see you, see you soon and we're going to party with Jesus when you come. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever said that before, but we'll do that. But just stay strong and I know uh, some are even working, have come up with ways to earn money like my Brother Jarek in the Philippines, I miss you and miss you all. And when it comes, we will see you here and we will celebrate. And uh, I will, I will pray. And then we don't have music today. I was asked to sing a song, but I thought if I sing, you all will not watch the rest of it. So I'm not singing. But Steve will be here and share the message with you, a wonderful message with you. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful ministry, for, for the people that we get to share with, for the crew members, the volunteers, but all the volunteers and the wonderful staff we're here for the crew members on all the ships, a passenger and the cruise ships and the cargo ships. Lord, we, we just pray that you bless them, keep them safe. Keep them encouraged, knowing that through this difficult time, it is going to get better. We, we are going to keep the faith. We are going to continue to love you, to pray for you, to pray for each other. And life is good. Life is awesome because you still love us. And I just pray for joy in their hearts and the peace and strength to keep going. They keep their faith and uh, they're, they are safe. Their families are safe. And soon that we will be here celebrating you together we thank you so much we pray that you be with steve as he delivers your word and word of inspiration to all and it's your most loving and merciful name we pray amen thank you bob very nice to see bob back this yes. week he's returned to his job and it's always a pleasure to see him come and go and I will say hello and welcome to the Canaveral Port Ministry Ways of Hope Chapel. I am Chaplain Steve McCrory, and it is once again my privilege to lead us today through an examination of the book of Exodus. We've gotten through the book of Genesis, fabulous, fabulous book, and we are now into yet another exciting chapter, another exciting book, the book of Exodus. And today we're going to examine chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. And as I mention every week, we it's good habit to, when we're studying scripture, to know the content or something at least of what is going on before, during, and after the section of scripture we're, we're studying. As we opened in the book of Genesis, we have witnessed in chapter 1 the nation of Israel multiplying greatly in Egypt. And as time passed, Joseph and all of his brothers had died. And then there was a new king who came to power who did not know Joseph. The Egyptians ended up enslaving Israel or the Hebrews and placed great hardships on them. And they had a fear that developed because the, uh, the, the Hebrews had multiplied like a lot and, and it threatened them. So they placed these hardships on him. Their fear grew to the extent that they began a population control of sorts of killing newborn males. Then in chapter 2, we read of the birth of Moses and his incredible supernatural upbringing. We saw Moses kill an Egyptian in defense of a Hebrew that led him to flee for his life to Midian. At Midian, Moses establishes himself and a family. Chapter 3 presents the episode of the burning bush, which is epic. God speaks to Moses and delivers a mission to him. The mission? Go to Pharaoh and bring God's people, 
the sons of Israel out of Egypt. Moses contests the assignment, but we already know how that works out. God's sovereignty always prevails. As we enter chapter 4, we see Moses given powers, three distinct powers, the, the serpent and the staff. We see the leprous hand displayed and healed, and water from the Nile turned to blood on the dry ground. Which leads us up to today's passage, uh, chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. But as we do every week, let's have a little peek into the material that is to come. In the remainder of this chapter, Moses complies to God's command and returns to Egypt. Then in chapter 5, we see Israel's labor increased after Moses calls upon Pharaoh. That doesn't go over real big. We also see doubt in Moses' belief. In chapter 6, we're going to see God's promises come to action. And in chapter 7 and 8, where it really gets great, uh, the four class is plagues. And God stretches out his hand and intervenes. But for now, let's hop back to the passage for today while I read um, Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. And as I typically do, I'm reading out of the NLT, the New um, Living Testament version of the Bible. I like to do so because I think the, the English, the, the verbiage, the words that are used are, are most easy for a lot of the people who might be watching today whose language, the English is their second or third language. So um, Exodus chapter 4 verses 10 through 17. But Moses pleaded with the Lord, O oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been. I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Then the Lord asked Moses, Who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak? Hear or do not hear? See or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. But Moses again pleaded, Lord, please send anyone else. Then the Lord became angry with Moses. All right, he says. What about your brother, Aaron, the Levite? I know he speaks well, and look, he's on his way to meet you now. He will be delighted to see you. Talk to him and put the words in his mouth. I will be with both of you as you speak. And I will instruct you both in what to do. Aaron will be your spokesman to the people. He will be your mouthpiece. And you will stand in the place of God for him, telling him what to say. And take your shepherd's staff with you and use it to perform the miraculous signs I have shown you. And that concludes the reading of, of, of the passage. And it's, it's a... As with all passage, it's just very interesting. And as we sort of go back and review over this, we're going to see quite a few messages come into play here. For example, in review for verse 10, where Moses makes an excuse, I can't speak well. After these remarkably persuasive signs, Moses still objected to God's call. Moses revealed that he was not confident with his ability to speak. Like, slow of speech is literal, means literally heavy of mouth. It seems that Moses' excuse was not justified. Clearly, 40 years before this, Moses was not slow of speech or slow of tongue. As we might read in the New Testament in the book of Acts, Acts 7.22, it says this, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and deeds. As we go to verses 11 and 12, God's response to Moses' excuse is, is, is great. The fact that Moses believed that he was not elegant, eloquent is completely besides the point. The God who created the most eloquent mouths who ever lived was on his side. This is a dramatic statement revealing the sovereignty of God, and God revealed it in the context of an invitation 
to trust God and to work with him. There is not the slightest sense of fatalism in this declaration of God's sovereignty. It is never, God is so mighty, we can't do anything, but rather it is always, God is so mighty, he can work through us if we make ourselves available. Some think this is cruel of God. Nevertheless, the point here was not to analyze the origin of evil, but to show that God is so mighty that he can even call the mute, the deaf, and the blind to do his work. Moses' perceived inadequacies didn't matter at all. If Moses was a poor speaker, was this news to God? Does God have trouble keeping track of who is deaf, who is blind, and who is mute? Does Moses really think God made a mistake? If Moses was a poor speaker, it didn't matter. The mighty God said, I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. By extension, God is sufficient for us, no matter what real or imagined inadequacies we have. As we proceed into verses 13 through 17, and, and we see Moses' uh, unwillingness and God's reply, because finally, Moses was done with excuses and showed the real state of his heart. Simply, he would much rather that God send someone else. His problem wasn't really a lack of ability. It was a lack of willingness. And this isn't so unusual. It's common for men to give pretended reasons instead of the real one. God was not angry at Moses when Moses asked, Who am I? He was not angry when Moses asked, Who should I say sent me? He was not angry when Moses disbelieved God's word and said, suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. He was not even angry when Moses falsely claimed he was not and had never been eloquent. But God was angry when Moses was just plain unwilling. There may be a hundred understandable reasons why Moses was unwilling, some of them making a lot of sense. Perhaps Moses really wanted to serve, but was unwilling because of past rejection. Nevertheless, the basic truth was that Moses was unwilling, not unable. When God brought Aaron to help lead with Moses, it was an expression of his rebuke to Moses, not of his approval or giving in to Moses. Aaron actually was more of a problem to Moses than help. Aaron turned out to be the source of a number of problems for Moses. As we will find as we proceed throughout our studies, Aaron instigated the worship of the golden calf, fashioning the calf himself and building the altar himself. We're going to see that in Exodus 32. Additionally, we're going to find Aaron's sons blasphemed God with impure offerings that we see in the book of Leviticus. And at one time, Aaron openly led a mutiny against Moses. And we're going to see that in the book of Numbers when we get to it. As these episodes unfolded, Moses surely looked back at why the Lord gave Aaron to Moses as a partner and realized it was because God was angry at his unwillingness. Yeah, Aaron was a smooth talker, but a man weak on content. Moses had to put the words of God into the mouth of Aaron. In this sense, Aaron was like a modern-day newsreader who does something, but all he's doing is reading what has been written for him. In contrast, Aaron wasn't God's spokesman. He was the spokesman of Moses. God doesn't need leaders like this. It isn't God's way to have a man minister as a smooth talker but not be qualified for leadership. God wants to combine the offices of talker with leader. In reflection, we see that rather than inspiring confidence in Moses, God's commission frightened him. Moses' claim to be slow of speech and of tongue was a thinly veiled excuse by which Moses hoped to escape his calling. Moses' limitation was psychological, not physical. 
And God reminded Moses that he was the creator. This claim of Moses being an adequate is a recurring one we see in Old Testament passages having to do with God's callings and commissions. The Old Testament pattern of the weak become strong, the least become great, the meek become mighty, the last become first, is a fundamental message that is the same. God's word, God's rule, God's teaching, God is sovereign. As Moses was reluctant to trust God all the way, we need to recognize our weaknesses. But when God calls us to do a job, we should respond with trust. God will enable us to do the job that he calls us to do. Much as we saw with the patriarchs in, in the book of Genesis, God has a purpose that you and I often do not see. We need to remember that he has a good purpose in view. As we are called, and make no mistake, we are all called in one fashion or another, it is up to us to make the decision to obey and trust. God is not going to let anything happen to us unless it will accomplish a good purpose in our lives, even if it makes no sense to us, even when it makes no sense to us at all. Behind all the events we read about in the story of Moses lies the unchanging plan of God. God remained faithful to his purposes then, and he continues to remain faithful to his purposes today with us. His people can continue to trust him and believe that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God has an indescribable love for us, and he proves over and over throughout Scripture that despite our failure, his love endures. God offers us gifts and blessings to claim when we come to him, confess our shortcomings, our, our failures, our sin, and repent and try to live in according to his will. His greatest gift of all is the invitation for us to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But like all gifts, it is ours to accept or reject. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we are all offered the gift of salvation, a restored relationship with God, and the gift to receive the Holy Spirit. The Bible does not suggest that we get a second opportunity to receive this gift after we pass from this life. Not one of us knows with any certainty when, when our time is over here. Now is the time to embrace God's love for us, to be in a restored relationship with him. And to do so, we need to acknowledge that we sin and need to be forgiven. We need to trust and profess Jesus Christ as Lord. That he paid for our sins on the cross and was raised from the dead according to scripture and that he still lives. We need to turn from our worldly sinful ways and embrace God's holy and pure ways for our lives. Would you like to receive him today, right now? Just as God had a plan for Moses, he has a plan for you. We are to come as we are, no matter who we are or where we are from. We have all done, thought, or said bad things, which the Bible calls sin. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the result, the consequence of sin is death and spiritual separation from God. But God loves us. God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God sent his son, Christ Jesus, to die in our place for our sins. Jesus died in our place so we could have an everlasting relationship with God and be with him forever. The Bible clearly tells us Jesus is the only way. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. We can't earn forgiveness of our sins or restore our relationship with God on our own or by trying to be good enough. Jesus Christ knows you and loves you. He's knocking on the door of your heart right now. Will you open those doors? Will you let him in? Will you restore your relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ? 
I'm going to offer a prayer that you may repeat along with me if you would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You may repeat it along with me if you've already done this, but feel that you've slid off the path a bit and you want to get back in alignment. You want to get really back in, in sync with, with our Lord Jesus. Well, if you'd like to do so, please, you can repeat along with me out loud, quietly, or silently. And my prayer is this. Dear God, I know I am a sinner and need forgiveness of my sins. Jesus, I believe you are Son of God, that you died on the cross for my sins and was raised on the third day according to Scripture. Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. Please come into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Please help me, Lord, to turn from my sinful ways and follow your will, your ways for my life. Jesus, thank you so much for loving me. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. I always love that prayer. Um, that concludes our study for today. Again, if this was the first time you might have repeated this prayer along with me, if you just invited Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, please let us know here at the ministry. We have materials that we would like to get to you to help you in your walk with the Lord. And if you've said this along with me, and it might have been the first, second, third, a hundred times, it doesn't matter. Please let us know, because we too would like to send you materials to help you in your walk. Again, uh, it's been my privilege to be here. I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Until then, be safe and blessings.